The last topic I want to mention in this video is creation of Evidently Report, because with help of Evidently Report you could calculate many different metrics related to different aspects of machine learning pipeline, so those metrics can be very useful for your future monitoring. So together with model creation and creation of reference dataset, I suggest us to quickly build Evidently Report so that you can observe it and derive a couple of interesting metrics so that later we could just reuse those calculations for our monitoring in Grafana. Let's do that. And first of all, we need to import, report, column mapping and couple of metrics from Evidently. Let's go back to the very beginning of our code and update the import part. Basically, I imported three main things from Evidently. The first is column mapping. This is the object which helps us to parse data frame correctly. Basically, Evidently can parse data automatically, but in this case, Evidently assumes the standard names. I mean, the target column should be named target, predictions column should be named predictions, and uh, the numerical and categorical features will be parsed automatically based on pandas data frame column types. Sometimes it's okay, sometimes not, especially if you use some uh, categorical features encoded as digits for machine learning algorithms. So it's always better to let evidently know how to parse your data to make sure that everything will be passed correct, parsed correctly. Second thing is report. So this is the object which includes the results of matrix calculations and allows us to visualize it as HTML or, or render it as the JSON or Python object, depend on the use case you have. And finally, we imported three metrics, which are column drift, dataset drift, and dataset missing values. Evidently, package includes a lot of different metrics related to data quality and integrity, data drift, and model's performance. So now, for the sake of our examples, I selected three metrics, but of course you are free to explore more, for example, using Evidently documentation, and decide what metric suits your best. So let's run this cell again. Now we imported everything, and let's move back to the end of our examples. Example, so I'm going to create new topic. I would call it Evidently Report. Yeah, it's done. And now let's start from the column mapping object. The syntax of column mapping is very similar to standard Python dictionary, so we just need to label the target, prediction, numerical, categorical features here. So let's do that. I'm not going to analyze target in any metric, so I just want to skip it. This is why I write target is equal to none. Second is prediction. We do have prediction, it is called duration mean. But in our validation dataset, we called it prediction, so let me use correct naming. Oh, it's, it was our target, which was named duration mean, so yeah, prediction is always prediction. Okay, now let's go to numerical features. Luckily, we already have a Python list, so we can just reuse that. Here is our column mapping. Now let's create a report. Report is an object which allows us to select what metrics we want to calculate and group them all together. So to create a report, we need to specify which metrics we want to include here. So now let's include all metrics we already imported from Evidently. So I would start from column drift. And here I need to specify the column, which in my case would be prediction, because I want to calculate prediction drift. I believe it's a pretty important metric to analyze data quality and stability, so I would do it for my prediction column. And then I would just add dataset drift and dataset missing values. So my report is ready. Now I need to calculate my report, basically evaluate all these metrics. For doing that, I need to pass to the report run method my reference dataset, my current dataset, and column mapping. Let's do that. So I use method run and pass my data. 
Basically, what I can do here is just reuse my training data and my validation data. Now my report is calculated, so I can load different representation of my report, I mean different formats. And I would start from the visual one in order to show you what evidently can build for you. So let me use method show and I would use mode inline. Method show allows us to load the HTML representation of a report inside of Jupyter Notebook. It's also possible to create an HTML page standalone where we can save the same format of the report, but for the, case, for the purpose of the analysis right there, we just will load the results in our Jupyter Notebook. So here it is. Let's quickly observe what you have. So basically we have an HTML report which includes all three metrics we specified in our report. So we start from column prediction data drift is not detected, which is actually good. It means we quite successfully split our data into training and validation paths, but it was pretty straightforward split, so that makes sense. You can see pretty much same distribution. Then dataset drift, not detected again, luckily. No one column has drifted, which is good. And there's quite a lot of missing values, but that's okay. So that's how we can use the report from Evidently. Basically, it shows you the results for the metric you selected to include in the report. For the analysis purpose, HTML format is great. It helps us easily and fastly grasp all the information. But for the automation purpose, for example, if we need to derive some values for specific metrics and based on those values decide what task to run, for example, in our pipeline. In this case, it's much better to work with some different format. In our case, we will use the Python object format. In our case, this will be Python dictionary. So let's create the result object. I just will call it result. And I'm going to use my report as a dictionary. So I write report as dict. And let's see how it looks like. Basically, this method allows us to get the report in the dictionary format, so we can easily derive any value from this dictionary. For example, later in my monitoring, I would like to derive information about prediction drift, about the number of drifted columns, and about the share of missing values. So I can easily derive those data from the result in my Evidently Metrics calculation script so that I can just use Evidently as the evaluation layer for my monitoring. So now let's see how we could derive those values. So later we will just copy this code from the Jupyter Notebook. Oh, that's long dictionary. So I would start from prediction drift and let me write the code to derive this value. Yep, that's correct metric. So now I need to get drift score. So I'll just copy it from here. Yep, that's my drift score. My second metric is number of drifted columns. Yes, that's correct metric. And maybe now you already have a question why actually all the metrics are stored as the list in this report, not as a dictionary. Because it might look like it would be much more convenient if you, can if you could just call this metrics by the name, not by the index like zero or first or second. The answer is that evidently allows you also calculate similar metrics with different parameters. And in this case, it could be much more uh, complicated to derive those metrics by names, including the parameters. So this is why we just decided to create the metrics list as the list, right? So that you can derive needed metric by index. So now I'm going to derive number of drifted columns. And finally, I need to derive share of missing values. Evidently calculates share of missing values separately for current and reference data set. In our case, we are interested in the share of drifted values for current data set. This is why after result, I use current. So let us run it. 
Uh, so yeah, it's second. And now uh, we can use this dictionary to figure out uh, what what to copy, right? So I want to copy share of missing values. So basically, this is how you can derive any values from evidently report and use evidently as the evaluation layer. So later we are going to use this code in order to calculate metrics and later log it into database and visualize it in Grafana.